Hello. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk to you about the Mentally Healthy Diversity Program. We wanna find out if this is a legend or if it can become a part of your legacy. My name is Sherry James. And my name is James Pogue. So before we get started, let me ask you all a couple questions. When you're thinking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the work that you do, how much do you know in order to do your job? Do you know everything about diversity and equity inclusion that you need to know in order to do your job very well? So hands in the audience, if you wouldn't mind, do you know zero to 25%, 26 to 50, 51 to 75, 76 to 100? Think about it for a second. Second is up. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think that you're somewhere between zero to 25. That's what you think that's where you are. You know zero to 25% of what you need to know to do your job well. What about 26 to 50? All right, anybody 51 to 75? Any 76 to 100 folks? All right, so I've been doing this for a little while and I continue to challenge myself about what it is that I know and what I don't know. And I get my biases revealed to me consistently. And when I ask myself this same question, I usually end up somewhere around 40 to 50%. Because over and over again, it's revealed to me that I don't know everything that I need to know. And so when we think about diversity, equity, inclusion, and we push ourselves as leaders to do all that we can do, we also have to now consider, especially in today's environment, how it impacts mental health. Yeah, so one of the things that I'm passionate about is mental health. Um, I have a passion to make sure that people have tough conversations. I love to empower leaders, but I also understand the importance of understanding that mental health is a part of a diversity, equity, and inclusion program. And that's something that may not have been heard of before. Now, I love to imagine this happy place. James hates this slide, um, but there's hope, right? So if I find a place where I can be mentally healthy, where I am physically healthy, and I feel like I belong, then I will perform and probably outperform everyone that's around me, right? But that happy spot takes some tough conversations uh, and a lot of hard work, and we're here to help you with that. It's the difference between the pyramids and the circles, right? Which is a some tension that it's, we're trying to work through. I know. I like circles. Sorry. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. I know. All right. So let's talk about a couple of different perspectives. 2020 was tough for me. Maybe it was just me. Was it just me? It wasn't. Did anybody else struggle in 2020? It, it, it may have been just sure. It might have just been me. <laughs> Possible. Um, but all lives changed in 2020, right? Mental health is a concern of everyone. Our children, our spouses, our partners, the people that we work for, the entire planet is feeling it, right? Sadly, as a result, suicides are at an all-time high. Um, people as young as eight are committing suicide and you know the pandemic is not making it any better but everyone's talking about it so is it really possible to have a mentally healthy workplace after 2020 is it just a legend hmm. you know I think that it is possible that we can leave behind uh, the kind of legacy that makes sense that, that, that suggests that we were there that we did something important when it comes to diversity, equity, inclusion. But in order to do that, we have to also be speaking the same language. Too many times we end up in a place where we're saying diversity, diversity, or inclusion, inclusion, but we're not understanding what we're saying. So what is diversity? Diversity is this full range of human difference. Everything about you and me that makes us different, whether it be race or gender or sexuality, our politics, our religion, socioeconomics, age, all of this is part of what diversity is. And as we're walking our inclusion path, and if that is our goal, we have to understand a couple things. One, when it comes to mental health, we have to slide that lens in there. If we're not, we are not taking seriously the significant challenges that have occurred over the last year or plus. So as you think about what you're leaving behind, when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, don't forget that mental health is a significant part of that. Absolutely. Um, inclusivity, the word means that you will include others. Now, one of the things about mental health, it's a disability that you can't see. I would love to take a poll. How many people in this audience could name every single thing that it's, that's my diagnosis? Anyone, can anyone look at me and say, oh, she looks like she might be be nice, Miss Betty. I know you want to say. I've got a list in my pocket. <laughs> Long um, list. Well, uh, we, we have to work on it. Everyone has to have a role in understanding that our mental health is key. And why not make it a part of being an inclusive workforce? We've got to look through that lens. Absolutely. Um, it's time for a reset. 2020 is over. Whew, now we can start fresh. 
anew. We can say, you know what, it's an opportunity to reset. The things that didn't work for us before, we can do different now. The things that did work before, we can do more of that because everybody's listening. The planet is actually quiet enough to say, hey, we've got a problem. Let's make sure everyone can do something about it. Find a place for those tough conversations. Find some allies and champions in your organization or your team or your family. And if you can't find one, then it's your responsibility to be that person. So the reboot, the doing it differently, doing something better, since the, hopefully the past is in the past, we can learn from it, we have to move forward. Many of us, that veil of innocence that surrounded us when it came to diversity, equity, and inclusion is gone. We now are forced to see, experience, touch, taste, hear the kinds of language around diversity, see the kinds of things that, around diversity that we were able to hide from just a little while ago. And in many cases, we have realized that our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives were not enough. They weren't rigorous enough, they weren't strong enough, they weren't enough. And so emergent and new significant solutions in order to shift the paradigm are required. So questions. One, is, the, is there renewed energy? Is there renewed conversations? Sure, absolutely. Is there renewed time and effort and resources? That's unknown. And so for those of us that are in decision-making situations, decision-making positions, it's DEI 2.0 time. It's time for rigorous standards and significant KPIs around DEI. We have to professionalize this work in the same way we do our CFOs or our CIOs and all these other folks that work in significant ways in organizations. Let's not forget that there also must be significant budget allocations. You want to make a difference? You follow the money. No money, no difference. DEI 2.0 is going to require all of these things. I'm here for the money. <laughs> okay, that's just, that makes me mentally healthy, personally, if I have more money. Um, it could just be me. All right, um, so in conclusion, we believe that we are all responsible for the diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging to that O. Um, if we don't do something now, what legacy will we leave? What will be the thing will we tell our children, our children's children, hey, I lived through and I survived 2020, and like, what did you do differently? So what will your legacy be? Does anyone have any ideas? Is, is there anything burning inside of you that you absolutely know you want to leave as your legacy? Well, you know, for, I believe that in, if we're gonna do this and do this well and do this right, what we leave behind has to be more than just a footprint. We have to leave a path for others to follow, right? And as we're walking this path and others can follow the path, sometimes we have to beat down a new path. Right. And so we have to go where other people have not been before and do it in ways that other people have not done it before. If we want to make a truly legendary and legacy oriented difference. Awesome. Now, I would love because I am a person th to engage with the audience. What questions do you have about diversity, equity and inclusion that we could answer for you today? And in particular, how it connects to the, 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 the needs around mental health. Oh, you're all experts. That's awesome. <laughs> That's even better. We had no idea. All right. So how about this? How about how many people believe they work for an organization that mm. is as diverse and inclusive as it should be? Show of hands. OK. Uh, a few. Well, we, we got a couple of. All right. How many people believe that you are in a position to change diversity, equity and inclusion going forward? That's awesome. 100 percent is what we were looking for. Let me ask the partnering question. How many of you believe that you work for an organization that is as ment mentally healthy and supportive as it can be? And no hands. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. Maybe not. I'm going to get to the shoulder, but not going past. <laughs> it's OK to have these conversations, right? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a question? have a question? Sure. So I feel like in rooms like this or other rooms that I'm in that I'm full of maybe like-minded people, so maybe we're in a good place. Maybe, you know, I personally treat people the same mm -hmm. um, and until I get to know them better, then maybe a little better, maybe then a little judgmental. Um, and I'm in rooms with people who are the same way. Mm -hmm. So how can we, like, how can I and my community bring other people around? Not that I'm perfect, and probably not that you're perfect either. And so. How do you work in your community? I work in my community to start shifting those mindsets. Yeah. So one, I make no assumptions when I'm talking to people. I assume that people are coming to the table because they're good people. Most people are really good people and they want to do the right thing, but they may not have the tools to get there. 
They may think they're doing the right thing, but they may be stumbling along like the rest of us. And so when it comes time to talk about diversity, inclusion, by some of the tough things that are going on, particularly when we're trying to make that connection to mental health, they may not have the language, the words, the experience, the muscles to have that conversation. So that's the first thing that I think is, is critical. The, the second is that when we're in rooms of like-minded people, we still have to push with the same level of energy. How do you, the, the reason we preach to the choir is to get the choir to sing. And if the choir doesn't sing, the church is not gonna move, right? So we have to move people, get them to move and when the choir is there, right? So that they can take their piece of information and, and, and ripple it out to the next group of folks. So we, we, we have to make sure that we are, are engaging people at the level that they are, make no assumptions about what people bring to the table. But, and if you happen to know more about mental health and, 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 and so on, then teach me, right? So that I can go sing for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And another thing to that very point, you mentioned I'm in a room of people and we all think the same. There's an opportunity for just diversity of thought, right? So sometimes it's saying, hey, here's my idea. Here's what, what I think we should do. Tell me who thinks this is not going to work. So that diversity of thought is very important. Um, it, you know, obviously the mental health aspect is a part of that, but some people have gone through things that make them better at understanding trauma or understanding when things go wrong in an organization. They may be uniquely equipped to deal with emergent, hey, something just broke, what should we do? We should go to Sherry, because Sherry's the person that's like, hey, I don't know how we got here, but we gotta fix it, right? So making sure that diversity of thought is also a part of your team can help you get there. Did that answer your question? Yes. Awesome. Yes, sir. Um, as I think about what you guys are talking about, I thank you for highlighting this topic, because it's, it's never been more important as it's been exposed by the pandemic. Mm -hmm. There are two sectors. There's the private and then there's the government. Which one do you think is most important to drive this point home? Yes. Mm. Yes, to both. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, I ask people when, I, when I'm working with different groups, organizations, you have to start with that person in the mirror. And he, she, they have to be honest with themselves. Where am I with this? Right? How comfortable am I with this? If I've got a, a challenge around um, uh, uh, ind indigenous people, do I, am I in a position to tap someone on the shoulder or go to that workshop or watch that documentary so I can learn more? I'm like, ah, nah, not gonna do it, not gonna do it, right? If it's a black-white issue, am I comfortable going to my white friends and saying, hey, white friend, um, I have some white questions about how you all do your stuff, you know? <laughs> And on the reverse side, am I comfortable when one of my friends comes to me and says, hey, black guy, I have some black guy questions. Am I going to be like, man, you need to ask somebody else, right? Because I'm in a mood, right? right? Because something happened in the world. Or am I going to say, you know what? Maybe not today. Give me 24 hours. I'll come back to you, right? So we have to look at the person in the mirror, I believe, and start there. Then I can take that to my family. Then I can take that to my team. Then I can take that to my organization because they got to know that it's authentic coming from me, mm -hmm. right? That I'm not playing games with this. It's from the inside out. Even the mistakes that I'm about to make, <laughs> those are authentic too, right? And if I'm going to fall on my face, I'm going to do it with intention. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, you got to be a... I think you should have told me that <laughs> before you got up here. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice to know before you got here. Um, no, that's great. I appreciate that. I think we need to make sure that the same thing applies when it comes to mental health. There's such a stigma still there's, it's still a very taboo topic. So if there is someone that is willing to have those conversations, reach out to them, utilize them. That is, uh, some of us, that's what we've chosen to do for the rest of our lives, is to make sure that people have a safe space to talk about mental health. We all have health, whether it's good or bad. So let's be more preventative, have more conversations, but that also requires that transparency and saying, hey, I see a therapist, I have to right? It's mandatory. This was before the pandemic, mm -hmm. but being able to stand on a stage in front of people five years ago, I would never have told you that, right? Because I, the person in the mirror, was too ashamed to say, I need to go talk to someone. So the same thing applies from a diversity perspective. It also applies when it comes to mental health. Be willing to do the work on yourself and then lead by example. Yeah. So uh, that's our presentation. I am Sherry James. And I'm James Polk. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.